So we're going to be considering forces, acceleration, and in particular, the frictional force. So we saw in the previous topic how forces were needed to speed an object up. Forces are also needed to slow an object down. This is because of Newton's first law. An object will remain in the state of constant motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So if we want that motion to change, i.e. we want it to slow down, we need a force that opposes the motion. When a force opposes the motion, we have a negative acceleration, or what's known as a deceleration. This is where a car is slowing down, or in other words, it's accelerating, but in the opposite direction to what it's moving in. So in a car travelling along the road, it's the frictional force which opposes the motion and will allow the car to slow down. So let's make sure that we all have a very clear picture of the relationship between acceleration and velocity and speeding up and slowing down. To do this, we're going to consider a man standing in a lift or an elevator on a set of scales that will measure his weight force. So he'll read off that weight force as a mass in kilograms. So imagine that the man steps into that lift, he's standing on the scales, the lift hasn't started moving yet, so the man and the scales and the lift are all stationary. In this case, he looks down and he can see his mass. His mass is 80 kilograms. Now, Newton's second law tells us that in this case, as he's got his weight force acting downwards, the scales are providing a reaction force which is acting upwards, and this reaction force must be equal to his weight force. So the scales are actually reading that reaction force. So when he's standing there stationary, they read 80 kilograms, and this is because it's related to that reaction force. Now let's imagine that the lift now starts to accelerate upwards. He's trying to get to the top of the building. In that case, his weight force does not change. He still has a mass of 80 kilograms. He's still on Earth where the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second. And so he has the same weight force acting downwards. However, now there is an acceleration. So we know from Newton's second law that there is a resultant net force. And that net force must be upwards because that is the direction that he is accelerating in. So just by considering this, we can see if there's a resultant force upwards and he has a weight force downwards, then there must be a greater normal force upwards to overcome that weight force and also to lead to this acceleration. So let's have a look at how we could calculate the reading on the scale as that lift accelerates upwards at 2 metres per second per second. So in this case, we've got a lift which is accelerating upwards at 2.0 metres per second per second. We've got the man standing on the scales. The mass of the man is 80 kilograms. And we know that the acceleration of the man is equal to the net force acting on the man divided by the mass of the man. So we've got that the, acceler the acceleration is 2.0 meters per second per second upwards. We need to divide by the mass of the man, which is the 80 kilograms. And now we need to consider the net force. Well, the forces acting on the man are his weight force, which is going downwards and has magnitude mg. So we've got this mg downwards. And then he also feels the reaction force from the scales pushing up on him, which is upwards. So these are in opposite directions. So let's rearrange this. We can see that... 2 times 80 is 160, and that is a force upwards is equal to mg, which is a force downwards, plus the normal force. And what we're trying to do is find this normal force, because the reading on the scale is proportional to the normal force. 
So the normal force is equal to 160 newtons upwards minus mg downwards. Now, this brings us to a, an important thing in vector algebra. If we have the negative of a vector, negative of a downwards vector is equal to the same vector but in the opposite direction, so upwards. So we can write this as 160 newtons upwards plus mg upwards. So now all we need to do is substitute everything in. We've got 160 upwards plus mg, which is 80 times 9.8 upwards. And so the net, the normal reaction force acting on the man from the scales is equal to 944 newtons upwards. So we were asked what would the scales read. Rather than reading out a force in newtons, scales are set to read out a mass in kilograms. So to convert from this reading in newtons to the mass in kilograms, we actually need to divide by 9.8. Because if the man was just standing on the scales, the scales experience the force of 80 times 9.8 newtons, but to read it, you just read 80 newtons. So reading on scales is equal to 944 over 9.8. So solving that on the calculator, we get 96.3 kilograms. And so it's heavier as the lift accelerates upwards. If you think about getting into a lift and the lift starting to move, you can really feel the floor of the lift pushing on your shoes and it does make you feel a little bit heavier. Which So it makes sense that this number is a larger number than the mass of the man.